welcome back, friends. I hope you're having a good, uh, is it Labor Day? Labor Day Monday today. Mrs. Debbie and I are trying to get wrapped up with our chores so we can go down and um, try out a little kiteboarding. So I mentioned that in a couple videos back. I was just uh, uh, laying out some of the used equipment that we bought. I thought you might find it interesting. I'll give you a quick walk around. This is not a tutorial or any instruction. I have only had two lessons. I don't know anything other than I was just able to get up and, and ride and it, it seemed like it was fun. So today, if we go, will be the first day <laughs> that, I, that I ride by myself. Uh, so wish me well. So let me give you a quick walkthrough. I think you might find it interesting. It's uh, a pretty cool sport. So this is the biggest kite that I have. I have two. I have what they call an eight meter and a 10 meter. I guess they go all the way from, I don't know, like four to 16 or something. I'm not really sure, but for this area, uh, seems like a guy can get by with about three kites, uh, an eight, 10 and a 12 or a, a 9, 11, 13. There's quite a bit of overlap. So it's pretty big, pretty good size. They're kind of interesting because they have a uh, inflatable bladder that uh, you inflate and then it has uh, three struts. So those struts kind of hold it up. So that leading edge is what faces into the wind. So you blow that up really tight and then it's got two lines that come down. These are called bridles. There's a red side and then there's a white side over there, there and that corresponds uh, to the lines on the handle. Uh, the safety features are what's kind of cool that was lacking. See, I tried this years ago, uh, 14, 13, 14 years ago when the kites were first coming out and they, they weren't a lot of, they were really dangerous. There weren't a lot of safety features. And I got up, uh, lifted up and on a really windy day and thrown to the rocks and knocked out some teeth. That was my last kite boarding uh, experience. So uh, these kites are a lot more gentle, <laughs> a lot more forgiving. There's some really great safety features. Um, and I'll show you here in a minute. I wanted to kind of show you the, I'm going to have to back up here a little bit, the scale of these kites. And this is on the medium to smaller side as, size as a 10, but it's, it's pretty, pretty big as you can see. It's already starting to get a little bit windy here. It's amazing uh, how powerful these are. Um, and also how, how forgiving they are to fly, or it was, it was my experience. I haven't flown these North Kites before. I flew a slingshot in my class, um, and from what I was told by people that know a lot more about it than I do, that the Norse and the Cabrinas are, are really good kites, maybe even <laughs> easier, easier to fly. Let's take a look at the boards. So this is a twin tip board. This is kind of, um, I guess, where you start, where the beginners start. It uh, will go both ways. It's very similar to a wakeboard uh, in that it can ride both ways. I have, um, yeah, I, I found it really uh, comfortable and, and I guess it felt really familiar to me, I guess after over three decades of snowboarding and growing up slalom water skiing and, and wakeboarding, it wasn't really super, it's not really super alien to me. So I don't have anything adjusted. I, I did on my first day, I was able to uh, ride really well on my, um, my regular side. That's my right foot back. And then when I had to transition to goofy side, I, I struggled a little bit. On my second lesson, I was able to, I think, go upwind, what they call it, jibe. I was able to jibe both ways. Um, so today I'm hoping for another quantum leap of, uh, of uh, success. So here's a kite, here's the eight millimeter kite uh, right there. That's, they go into these really small backpacks. So you can pack, if you're not really sure which, which kite you're gonna use, you can take a couple down there and make sure you have the right one. According to the manufacturer on this 10, that this thing should be, you can use this between wind at 13 to I think 25, 26 miles per hour. Uh, the eight meter was higher wind. Maybe it was like 18 to 29 or something. Don't quote me. I don't really, I don't really know. Uh, the, let me put, I'll show you the harness too. So the harness is a really important part. Uh, there's a couple different styles of harnesses. There's a uh, one that just goes around your waist and then there's one that's uh, called a seat harness, uh, which is what, what I got. You're actually, your legs go through it. And it's kind of like a, uh, you know, similar to like a rock climbing harness, but, um, but full like, but you can rest into it um, and get some of that weight off of your, uh, get off your waist. Uh, so it has a, a great big hook here. This is where you tie in. Uh, we have a, a leash. This is part of the, the, the safety mechanisms here that I'll show you here in a second. Um, it's got an integrated knife, uh, so that's kind of cool. You can pull that out to that tab 
um, and then you could, if you needed to cut away or cut lines, uh, I guess worst case scenario, uh, you could do that as well. So let me put the harness on and I'll show you kind of how the safety mechanisms work. They're really interesting. So the harnesses are really comfortable. I mean, I, I've spent this four hours in one and I, you know, with a wetsuit underneath of it, I found it to be very comfortable and I like the seat uh, to be able to sit back in it and take the weight off of your arms. It actually, kiteboarding doesn't take a lot of strength. It's really about finesse and if you, um, you know, trust on the equipment. It just takes a little bit of, coming from a water skiing background, it was really difficult for me to trust uh, the lines and the harnesses I wanted to muscle uh, and it really tired me out. So I had a really good instructor that helped me to, hey, just rely upon your harness and lean back on it and it's not a muscle game. So this is a big stainless steel hook. This is how uh, you connect to the kite. The kite has four lines that come off of, uh, off of a T handle that go up to the kite. And this is called the chicken loop. And how this works is it's got a, a bar on there. Let's see how to, if I remember how to do that here. <laughs> it's got a bar on there and chicken loop on the bottom. Uh, that ties that in there. Now this is your, these are your lines that go up the middle. There's a stainless steel clip there. This is really important. This actually hooks to a leash. And there's two safety deployment or a way to get away from the kite. So you hook the leash onto the stainless line right there. Now the first one, of course, if you get into trouble, you kind of, you basically can almost let go of the kite uh, and, and it will depower. Uh, and that will take care of a lot of problems. Uh, the other thing is, is if you just need to get away from it or you need to get the power off of it, uh, this, this mechanism right here, this is a safety. So you take this thing and you pull it forward. And what that does is that releases the kite, but, also, but maintains it with this tether right here that will flag it out. I guess it will pull uh, on the center strings or center lines um, and it won't basically it, it, it'll depower it. it it will just kind of flop and fall down into the water but you're still tethered to it how this works is really cool if you look at it it's just a clev clever design uh, so you pull this up like that and it resets the steel so this hook stainless hook hooks in here you reset that pull that back there you go so to to release it if you get into trouble you just pull that and that releases that releases that uh, that dude right there. Okay, so worst case scenario, let's say you've done this um, and you're still tethered to the kite. You don't want to leave the kite. Uh, one of the instructors told me uh, that uh, he had a friend that drowned in the ocean because he got panicked. He was um, getting blown out and uh, cut loose of his kite, cut the tether loose. So over here, so if that's, let's say that you flew the kite into a barge or a boat or, you know, something that was really, you need, it was going to drown you, your second safety mechanism is a leash here. So you can pull that here and that completely uh, removes you from the kite. It's no longer attached to you. And this is, this is clever too. So it's on a spring and you just, uh, you feed that uh, stainless steel through the line and then it captures right there. You can see how that releases. Really clever, really simple, uh, but effective. But he, anyway, he released, he got panicked and he released himself. Um, he was no longer tethered to the kite, which would have been a great flotation device. Uh, the Coast Guard found the kite, but they never found him. So they said, don't, don't release from this unless you absolutely have to. Uh, it's, um, it's a last ditch effort and something to be avoided. So uh, that makes sense to me. Oh, I got to show you the knife. Everybody's going to want to see that. I know I would. I thought it was going to be, he said there was a knife in the harness. I thought it was going to be a regular knife, but it's uh, like a safety. A little safety, it's like a seatbelt cutter. So that's kind of cool. It'd be good to have. So that's about all there is to it. There's a, a, a life vest. I'll wear a, a kayaking life vest. I already have one of those and a, and a helmet. But um, yeah, it's, I, I always thought that it was, uh, you know, I guess I didn't do it earlier. I was like, oh, it's so gear intensive and so much stuff, but it's, you know, when you break it down, it's really not that bad. And when you practice a little bit, it seems the setup doesn't take all that long uh, and you can be up and going. So living in an area that has one of the best places in the world to kite is, um, it's a shame not to do it. So we have some other friends that are uh, getting involved with us. And Mrs. W is hopefully, it's kind of on the tail end of the season. It's starting to get a little bit cold, but um, we're gonna try to get her in a couple lessons and see if she can, uh, see if she's, she enjoys it. But my, my sister's done it for years and um, I've never been able to really go with them. And I, I would like to do that. So 
uh, yeah, so that's it. So we'll, uh, I'll take the camera down if we, if the wind holds and we end up going down there this afternoon, we'll uh, uh, bring you along, kind of show you some of the setup and, and see if I can uh, get up on the board uh, by myself without getting into, into mischief. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.